prepare this part for further um, assembly. Now we're going to be putting the rail on this side for the z-axis. This is the z-axis rail support piece. It's also going to have a an a-axis mount for the for the motor. Uh, to be able to put the rail on there we need to add the number eight nut inserts and it's going to be to these two um, or these four holes. So we need four number eight nut inserts. And make sure that the number eight inserts are on this side and not the side these two counter bore holes are located. Okay, now we're going to put on the A axis motor mount. We're going to use two one inch screws and two cross dowels. And these two screws, because you're not going to be able to um, get at them uh, once the assembly is put together. You're going to have to tighten them as much as you can. Don't over tighten them to damage the wood, obviously, but tighten them to, a, to a, um, a point where this is not going to move at all. You don't want this to shift um, at any angles. This, this is your sort of end effector at the, at the end. You want to try to make it as square as possible. When you start hearing crackling, it's the time to stop. Okay, so that's really, really solid. Um, if you want, you can add um, a few drops of glue here to, to tighten up everything. Now we're going to put on the, 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 the actual rail, and the rail is a strong tie HRS 6. And you'll see that we're using these four holes that we, we showed the, um, the insertion of the nut inserts. And all you're going to do is align the, the four holes and use number 8 3 quarter inch screws. And you can go ahead and tighten this up all the way since it's only one rail. And they make these strong ties pretty parallel so you don't have to worry about it uh, giving you a problem during operation. V-groove bearings do adjust so it'll tighten against this pretty nicely. And these rails are not heat treated or they're not hardened so um, the V-groove bearings will do a little bit of forging through time on the rails so that's actually a good thing. All right, now we can just test the fit and see. We can go ahead and, and bring the V-groove bearings in. It's actually holding so tight that it won't let it go down. It won't even move. So you want to loosen it up just a tiny bit. Now it feels much better. That's probably good. Um, and you can keep it like that. And you can, you can go ahead and um, tighten this one up a little bit more. You don't have to tighten it. I tighten it up too much. Bring it out like this. I use my inappropriate methods to tighten. We can still, even though it's this tight, we can still tighten these, and it, these will still move. Now we're going to put on the uh, the Z-axis um, coupling and lead screw on the top. It'll be a one half to one quarter um, rigid coupling and we'll use a lead screw roughly this size. Um, the sizes will be uh, op optimized for the proper use of this machine so it's going to be generally like this size. You want to just put it on to the end here and go to the midpoint. You're going to take a, an Allen wrench and tighten that side. So that's tightened. Um, you want to tighten it as much as you can, but not too much because you can over tighten these couplings and do damage. And there's not going to be much force on this one, so um, the torque isn't enough to really do much on um, this particular assembly. Now go ahead and tighten it to this. Pretty, pretty tight. So we have that done. Now we can go ahead and we can go ahead and add this piece. This piece is the the Z-axis um, anti-backlash nut holder. It will connect to the the rail assembly like this, and then the nut will receive the lead screw and go up and down. You'll also notice that there's a little um, circle here or um, a board.
core here that will accept all the wires that have to come from all of these motors and it'll it'll come through this hole and then you can use these two holes as a wire tie to to clamp it in and it'll keep all the wires in a vertical position so it won't get into the the functioning of the machine let's go ahead and hook this one on you're going to need a one and a half inch screw and a cross valve you'll also notice that there's a little bit of an oval here which may help with some um, um, adjustments you want to keep this slightly loosened. I mean, you want to you want to sort of snugly snugly tightened, but you want this to be able to move um, for the time being. We're going to tighten it up later on once we get everything nicely aligned. Now we're ready to put on the anti backlash nut. The anti backlash nut is just a nut that um, that has a cut in the, in the general shaft of the nut and this will slide up and down to uh, compress the, the actual um, threading of the nut so it, it, it holds tightly around the, the lead screw. We're going to put this into this pocket. Okay, we're going to take a one and a half inch number eight screw for the anti backlash nut to fasten it and we're going we're gonna to insert it from the top and then we're going to take a washer and a nut and secure it this way. And you have quite a bit of variation here for alignment, so you'll be able to align it perfectly. Do the same on the other side. All right, so now remember that there, you will, will probably have um, a tiny confliction with these two screws and the screws on the back of the rail, but if you do, just it'll, it'll clear it. You just have to be a little bit diligent. So mine is just getting past that obstacle. And once it's past it, it's, it's fine. If you do have a problem with that being um, an issue, you can just unscrew these a little bit, allow it to bring it out, and then put it back in. Uh, because it's not going to touch it throughout the, pro throughout the normal range of motion. We're going to bring it all the way down. We have two places of adjustments. The, the, um, the anti-backtosh nut will move in this direction, and the, the actual uh, motor will move in this direction, so you can make uh, a perfect alignment. And then we're going to tighten everything down once we have the alignment correct. Okay, so we're going to bring it all the way down because this is the tightest area for alignment. Look on the top and make sure that the the anti backlash nut is is essentially centered. You can move the 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 motor left or right. I'll show you moving it left, moving it right. And then you can also move this back and forth, but we're not gonna do that because it's already sort of springing into place. Now we're going to tighten the number eight screws down and you wanna make this as tight as you can get it. You'll probably need to get some pliers or a wrench. Get it as tight as you can. You don't want this assembly moving at all, this part of the assembly, because when you, this starts moving, then your Z axis becomes inaccurate. So that's pretty solid. Now we're going to, you can see we, we can't really move it that much anymore. We're gonna tighten the bottom of the, the motor so this stays in place. All right, now we have a good assembly. So you can bring this back up if you want and back down just to make sure the assembly works fine. And you'll notice that you, you really don't need that much of a, um, a Z-axis travel since we're doing picking and placing. Bring it up to this point. Okay, 